y'all. It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back for another review. This is my review for Pose. This is season three, episode two. Now, I do have an announcement to make before we start this. I do want to let y'all know that um, I got something to do this weekend. So, yeah, the Ready to Love review will be postponed as well. I know it seemed like, you know, I always got something going on, but your girl has been booked and busy these past two weekends. Now, um, you know, I used to be at the house, but listen it'll be out on monday all right y'all be all right everything else will be on track so yeah ready to love will be dropping sometime next week i, I might do it on tuesday or i might do it on monday since i'm not doing married to medicine no more that's another update i am not doing Mar married to medicine anymore i did do a poll on the community tab and majority rules okay a lot of people said that they was good on the medicine wives and so am i because a lot of y'all not even watching it for real so i'd rather just put my time and effort elsewhere into a show that's more enjoyable i mean y'all really ain't showing no love to my first review of pose and it's okay i mean y'all might y'all might just be slow coming in but i mean i really i really enjoy this show so i'd rather review this instead of merit the medicine now anyway um am i smiling <laughs> let me stop playing <laughs> Anyway, let's get into this review. So we see that Blanca is at um, the job with Judy. And shout out to one of my subscribers who let me know that her name is Judy. Okay, because I was calling her Nurse Sandra yesterday. But no, her name is Judy in the show. Her real name is Sandra, but in the show, her name is Judy. So anyway, we see Judy and Blanca. And Judy is like, look, if I wanted to have a silent lunch, then I would eat alone. Like, what's going on? Why are you talking? And Blanca is stressed out because of pray tell. You know, we know he drinking and all of that. And it's just too much for her to handle. And Judy was like, well, you know, y'all definitely need to do something about that because he ain't talking to her either since she checked him down at the funeral home for being high. So Judy suggested that they do an intervention. Okay, well, that's the name of the episode too. And there's a few people who done did, a, a, you know, one or two, or maybe even three interventions throughout this episode. Now we see that this is like, you know, a family meeting type of situation. So we see Lulu and Angel walking up to the building, feeling like hell, looking at hot ass mess. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, here we go. They back on that shit. Now um, we see that everybody, there's Ricky, Poppy, Electra, I feel like there was somebody else that I'm not mentioning, but everybody, the whole gang is there in support of Pray Tell in this intervention. They also have a mentor or a mediator, if you will. Her name is Lisa, and she's there to help them out. So she's letting them know, yes, um, throughout this process, write a letter and let him know how his drinking affects everybody. And Lulu is on the sidelines doing all kind of complaining, talking shit. And I was with Blanca, baby. If you don't like how this thing is going or if you can't get down with this shit, you can see the exit. You know where to go, ma'am. She shut the hell up and I said, I know that's right. Listen, if you want to go, you know where to start walking to, okay? Um, They got into it because they started doing a role-playing thing where Blanca started to read her letter and Lisa was, you know, reacting how Pray Tell may act. And Poppy just all out of it, go try to check Lisa about talking to Blanca like that. And Lulu started trying to clown him. So then he told her to shut up and call her a fiend. I think he called her a fiend. He called her something along those lines. And so that spark sparked up an argument and Lulu said something. Uh, no, Blanca said something about losing Damon. And I'm like, losing Damon? I don't understand why the story jumped so fast. I don't know if they just like fast forwarded, but last week Damon was with us and he was doing the ball and all of that. And all of a sudden he's back on rock. I didn't know he was ever on rock, but now he, he's, he relapsed and then he moved out of state to go be with his family. Is it me? Or was I, I was just like, where did this come from? Since because like, yeah i don't remember none of this happening last season and it just seems so random to me um so they're talking about how much it's going to cost to do this whole rehab situation it's gonna be 2500 you know they ain't got no money like that so they're trying to figure out how they're gonna come up with that so electric came up with the idea of going down to the ball especially since they're doing the cash prizes now they have 500 dollars per category so 
go ahead, stretch our stuff down at the ball, and let's get this money for pray tell. So everybody is on board, and we see that Electra is gathering the boys and the girls, okay? She is on her um, dance mom shit. Okay, listen. One, two, three, get it right, Ricky, okay? No, Angel, you getting those fashions together, we cannot have you looking raggedy. So she's getting everybody together in preparation for this ball. We see that Lulu and Angel are at the house, and they sitting there strung out, looking the mess, asking if people can notice uh, that they back on that shit again. And it's just like, oh, I mean, just looking at y'all, anybody can tell the child hitting a rock, so I don't understand. But um, Poppy is not here for it. He ends up coming home and, you know, Angel is trying to look normal. And he's like, bro, I already know you on that shit. Like, if you gonna keep doing all of this, he had a little intervention with her. If you keep doing all of this, baby, we're not walking down that aisle. So then Angel gets paranoid and she's feeling like he's gonna leave her. And he's like, nah, bro, we in this. Tell death do us part, whether we're married or not. But you just know, you gotta put that shit down if you're gonna be with me. I said, I know that's right, Poppy. Uh, we see Lulu down at the ballroom practicing. She's supposed to be a part of the lip syncing category. And baby, she is giving phony Braxton, okay? Her wig, her outfit, it was just enough for me, okay? And Alexa was not feeling it as well. And it, it was just, I was like, uh-uh. So she's doing a swap, okay? Pray Tell is going to be doing the lip syncing and Lulu is going to be in the background because Alexa had her own little intervention with Lulu and was like, baby, mother knows best, okay? You cannot get out there in the ballroom. I see what you're doing. You need to get off of that rock because it's a no for me and we, we're not tolerating that. And I said, I know that's right. Now we see that uh, Blanca is meeting, yeah, she's meeting the parents. So she's meeting Christopher's mom and dad. And baby, um, she's worried, but she's talking or she's getting ready to meet the parents. And she's talking to Angel about it and she's worried. You know, she don't want to be clogged by his parents. And Angel was just like, bro, don't even worry about all of that. You know, Chris loves you and that's enough for me, okay? Now, Bianca is, oh, Bianca, who is that? Blanca is asking what's up with Lulu and how she's thinning out and she's peeping the same thing with Angel. So Angel is trying to deflect and saying that, oh, you know, she got a gig. Poppy got her a gig, so she's trying to drop some weight. But Blanca was like, okay, well, y'all never said nothing about that. So she tried to hurry up and scurry out of there before shit got a little too real and Blanca caught on. But we already know Blanca be peeping shit anyway. So she know y'all on that rock, girl. Um, We see Chris's family. And who is his daddy? Oh, this Perry, bitch. Y'all know, um, do I? from the shop that's christopher's daddy i said come on Josh. he got gigs okay and then the mama she kind of look like lynn whitfield if you look real quick you know she's giving me eve's bayou tees you know if you just look real quick i said okay um i don't know her name but are you lynn's sister ma'am now um they're talking about how chris and blanca met they worked at the hospital together so that's how they met and baby obviously they was getting it in in the elevator or getting down at the job so they didn't really do a good job at letting us know how they actually met. It was just this thing where they was in the elevator. And next thing you know, they bumping and grinding. And I was like, um, okay. That, that is what it is. And then, the, you know, the parents got into the story of how they met. It was military base and all of that. And they wanted to get to know each other first before diving into having children while they were married. So then, of course, that prompts the mama to ask Blanca, you know, she wants kids and Christopher is like, well, she already got kids. She got four kids and, you know, she's a house mom. So it's basically like, you know, play auntie type of thing. So the mama was like, okay, but you playing house with your friends? Like, what's that all about? I noticed that Christopher is guiding this whole conversation. I said, mm, okay, you, that's because you don't want your mama to start getting down to the nitty gritty. And I was just like, yeah, I don't like how this is going. She making snide remarks and all of this shit. And um, I was like, okay, this is when I started questioning, okay, does the mom know about Blanca? Because the way that she was asking certain questions, it was like she had questions for herself. But, you know, Blanca had to get her together when she started telling her about her career path and how she used to have a nail salon and all of that. She said, baby, come to me and I can get them cuticles looking brand new, okay? You dry-fingered bitch. Now, <laughs> anyway, we see down at the bar... Blanca is backstage with Angel and Electra, and she's feeling some type of way about meeting the parents, and she feels 
basically like she's not good enough for Christopher because you know he has all these good things going for him for himself and she's from the projects and she you know isn't a doctor and all it is so she's really down and out about this and Electra and Angel had to remind her who the hell she is and she's that bitch like girl know your worth please let's not do that because not not our Blanca she do not talk like that um we see that pray tell is at his friend Tyrone's house and he remember Tyrone is a part of the council and he is trying to get him to get up out of bed and come down to the ball as we all know by watching this scene at least Tyrone has the virus we didn't know that up until now but yeah he has the virus so pray tell is trying to get him out of bed and try to lift his spirits up a little bit so he manages to get him out the bed and he's getting ready and as he's getting ready he noticed that he has a lot of pills on his dresser so he's asking like why aren't you taking your medication and he said because he has some other plans for them so pray tell was like um i hope you don't think i hope you ain't thinking about od and he was like no nah, if i was i would go to the plaza hotel you know do it real big basically i mean not, i don't want to say do it real big but you know do something that he wants to do and then he'll take the pills and i thought that was very sad the fact that he even has this thought out but um, he took some type of pill. I can't remember what, what the pill name was. And he offered Pray Tell one. And Pray Tell took it, but he put it in his pocket. So, you know, his friend is on, Tyrone is on this medication. And they end up going down to the to the ball. I just, I love how he's so supportive of his friends, even though he's going through so much. He's going through a lot in his, you know, inner battles. But he's still being there for Tyrone and trying to get him out of the bed. Now, back at the ball, we see that Electra is serving, okay? She is going against Miss Nefertiti Khan, and Miss Nefertiti Khan is drowning, okay? Because Electra is uh eating her the hell up. She ended up getting tens across the board. Nefertiti, uh, it, was, it wasn't doing what it was. It wasn't giving what it was supposed to give, and it wasn't giving what it gave last episode. So, sorry, Hasa Khan, y'all are losing, okay? We see that it is time to do the lip syncing battle and we see Lamar is talking all kind of shit to Pray Tell. And I forgot to say too, when Pray Tell got to the bar, he had sat down Tyrone at the bar and he told him to drink a soda or some type of sparkling water, something like that. But once Pray Tell walked away, Tyrone had ordered a double shot. He's not supposed to be drinking while he's on medication. So yes, um, they do the um, lip syncing and Lamar is trying to talk shit to Pray Tell. Like, you know, you old, you washed up. Like, I didn't know they was letting old people do this lip syncing shit. So, um, what's his name? Lamar goes and does If by Janet Jackson. That's my song. If I was your girl, the things I do to you. So he started lip syncing and I was with Lulu. Baby, you doing too much. You like, I just... I, I wasn't really feeling him doing it. So then we see Pray Tell go. Oh, well, actually, but Lamar, he didn't get 10s across the board, unfortunately. Somebody rated him a 9, and he got upset about that. But um, Pray Tell ended up singing, Never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it by In Vogue. And I liked his performance more because less is more to me, okay? When you start doing all these dramatics and stuff, it kind of take away from your performance when you lip syncing. So I was here for Pray Tell's performance. I wasn't really here for his outfit because I was like, um, it says, what it says but anyway yes i prefer pray tells um in vogue performance better and so did the council okay because he got tens across the board now they have another mc because remember pray tell said he is retiring from mc and he couldn't do it no more and i was just like it does not feel the same without pray tell being on the mic i would prefer him back on his podium where he deserves to be and where he needs to be now uh the camera is constantly flashing back to Tyrone and he's you know taking these he's taking these drinks while he's on his on these pills so he ends up having a seizure the ambulance comes and they take him away now pray tell wants to go and be with his friend but Blanca's like no you need to stay here because Tyrone will want you to to finish it out and I was like bitch not not when my friend is going through it and I already know he's fighting the virus and now he having a seizure. I think not, baby. I'm about to go and I will see y'all later. Fuck this ball. But he goes back inside instead and we see that Ricky is voguing for his life. Now, um, it really wasn't giving me, like it was giving me average, but it was not giving me tens across the board. But I mean, hey, Ricky did it for the people. He did it for the House of Evangelista. And they all got the money for every category that they were in. So, um, 
what happened yeah we see that pray tell is out of it he is at the bar and he is taking shots he's stressed and here come lamar talking shit talking about oh well yeah i mean i know it has to be stressful seeing your friend like that and also seeing your future basically saying that pray tell was going to be in the same position that lamar is in and that was just so disrespectful to me it's just like um you know, Lamar, we had already known him from the previous seasons to be real uppity and real, you know, bougie, sadity, rude as fuck, self-absorbed. But now it was just like, ugh, you turned into a real villain. And I just couldn't, I couldn't stand looking at him in that scene. And I really wanted Pertel to beat his ass more than he did. But I mean, the a punch will suffice. But I really wanted him to stump that hoe down to the ground. Now we see at Blanca's house, the whole family is there and they're eating. And Pertel is ready to drink again. But Ricky is like, uh-uh-uh. He took the bottle from him. And this is when shit start getting real. Alexia told him, baby, you're going to rehab, okay? We've gotten the money saved up for you. We're booked up and you're going to rehab whether you like it or not next week. So, Pray Tell seemed to be on board. He was like, okay, you know, I can use a little vacation. That's fine with me. But then it becomes the intervention time where they started to pull out letters because Poppy mentioned Lisa. So, um, Pray Tell was like, who is Lisa? So, he started to let her know or let Pray Tell know, like, yeah, we have spoken to somebody and we just trying to help you. So, they bust out the letters. And as they're reading the letters... He gets on the defense, and that's exactly what I thought he was going to do. So, yeah, because I was like, uh-uh, he agreed to this a little too easy. But once I started reading them letters, he was like, oh, hell no. Nah. I know y'all not sitting here judging me. He got to read in Ricky, and then he really started to read Blanca and talking about her relationship with Chris and her uh, lack of confidence and all of this shit. Then talking about Poppy and how he ain't got no job and he need to stop riding off an angel coattail. I said, wait. Have you been down to the office in which Poppy works? Because, um, baby, that ain't, that's not giving me no average job, baby. He do not work at Pizza Hut. He does not work down at your local Starbucks nor McDonald's. So, um, pray tell me need you to go ahead and do a walkthrough of Poppy's job because, baby, he is not an average worker, if you want to call it that. I mean, he ain't working fast food. We'll say that because I don't want to offend nobody. Um, he ain't working minimum wage. That's not what it's given, at least. Um, so yeah, he started reading everybody and I was just like, yikes, you did not have to go in. And even he got, he started talking about Electra and then he stormed out and then he started reading Blanca some more in the hallway. I said, oh no, sir, you will not, you will not disrespect me. Yeah, baby, you're going to have to go on, go ahead. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Blanca was crying and shit. I said, uh-uh, I didn't like that. I didn't like how he was talking to her at all but side note blanca was looking real cute i said baby you making me want a, a long jean skirt take it back to the 90s one time that was real cute with the off the shoulder that's inspo okay okay blanca now we see that pray tell is at the house and he what is he doing class say it with me drinking okay he offered ricky a drink and ricky was like no mm -mm. and we could see him he packing his bag so pray tell's like um where you going i'm thinking he getting ready to go on the janet jackson tour but no he's actually getting ready to leave pray tell he was like i can't do it can't be like my mama sitting here settling and all of this so pray tell has a breakdown and he started reading ricky again saying that don't nobody want you you ain't smart you ain't this and most importantly you have the virus that's the reason why you here with me because don't nobody else want you so he started like you know going in and he started crying begging ricky to stay and ricky was like no i can't and i was so happy that ricky really stood his ground like nah i can't stay here baby you need to get your shit together and and that's that's exactly what it is you need to focus on you and i don't blame him shit don't nobody want to be around a, a drunk especially when you're verbally abusive the the things that he's saying to his friends and to ricky that's bruising as hell like mm -mm, i don't like that and i said oh they were they was doing a lot of acting there i said okay you know pray tell had the viola davis not okay um <laughs> we see poppy and angel and he had made her not nice dinner they popping champagne and she was like what is all of this for it's because Calvin Klein wants her to be a part of their fragrance campaign and she was a little reluctant she was like um I wasn't expecting to get back to work that quick because I have some other things that I'm trying to do come to find out she reached out to Lisa because she's trying to get her surprise sobriety together so she's trying to get off that crack rock honey and she said that she didn't want to tell poppy what was going on because he didn't want her to be or i, I think she said she was embarrassed and she didn't want him to be ashamed of her or something like that so yeah 
Angel was getting her stuff together and I love to see it because baby, we can't have you strung out. You got to get your life together if you want to marry that man. I said, well, baby, Poppy is just so fine and just... Shout out to Janet Mock. Um, anyway, <laughs> we see Blanca and she is at the house with Chris. She's lashing out on him. She's taking her frustrations out on him and she's mad because he did not defend her when they went to go meet his parents. So he was like, okay, well, let me do a do-over. I'm going to get it right today because my parents invited us out for dinner. So she was like, no, I'll pass. And he was like, no, it's just a redo. Like, for real, let's do this. So um, Otis Perry was not in attendance. He was running late, but the mama was there. So um, the mama is doing the most, asking Blanca if she is bilingual. She was like, yeah, I can have a conversation in Spanish, but my mama really wanted us to speak English. And she was like, okay, well, I mean, she didn't see the benefit of like you learning French or anything like that. And I'm with Blanca, you uppity bitch. Um, when you out here scratching and, and surviving, you ain't got time to be trying to learn no damn languages, okay? Fuck Spanish, fuck English, hell, fuck French, fuck all of that shit. I'ma speak what I know because I ain't got time to be trying to do the damn most. I was just like, uh-uh, she was doing too much. And I felt like, Christopher, you needed to do a little more because you know your mama is extra as hell. This is where you need to stop her dead in her tracks because you seen that she was on a roll. So Blanca was in her feelings and she was like... Why are you trying to come for me? Is it because um, I may not be as educated as your son? I'm not good enough for him. Um, I'm from the projects. I'm a transgender woman. I said, oh, okay. She put it out there. And the mama was like, I knew it. I knew it was something about you and saying how Otis Perry um, treats patients like uh, like her. And Blanca was like, I'm not one of your husband's patients, bitch. Like, you got the wrong one. And she looking at Chris like, you better defend me. Like, what's going on here? Because the mama started asking, like, how you gonna have kids with Blanca? And you already know you want kids, Christopher. And Christopher is mute. He ain't saying nothing. But once Blanca got up and act like she was gonna walk away, he was like, uh-uh, mama. I love her, this lady in my life. And if you can't get down with that, then you cannot be in my life either. Make sure you relay the message to dad. If he needs any clarifications, he could give me a call. I said, okay, Chris, go ahead. Cause uh, it was looking real shaky for you at first, McDreaming. It looked like you wasn't gonna step up for your woman and we was gonna have to fight. But um, we see that Pray Tell and Tyrone. Um, wait, I'm, I'm, yeah. We see that Pray Tell is trying to talk to the council. They're down at the funeral home again. And the council is there for him. You know, that's his friend. So they're in support of him. And everybody is asking what's going on with Tyrone. But they haven't seen him since he got released from the hospital. So, you know, the first thing Pray Tell do is go down to the Plaza Hotel. And true indeed, Tyrone is there laid out in the bed, on the bed. And I, my initial thought was call the police because I thought that he had already took the pills. But he didn't. He said he wanted to, but he's scared. He wanted to fight for his life. So... They end up crying and, you know, he said that he wants to live and pray tell said the same thing. So Tyrone said that he was going to stop taking the pills as long as pray tell stops taking or hitting the bottle. And they made a vow to each other. They was going to live their lives. Next thing you know, we see pray tell in the hospital with Blanca and he was, he was saying that he's tired. He's tired of wearing a mask and he's tired of being something that he's not. So next thing you know, we see that Blanca is driving him to rehab. And I was very happy for Pray Tell. Like, yes, get your life together, honey, because don't don't let this disease overshadow your life and any goals that you want to accomplish. So yeah, that was the end of the episode. It was, you know, I, I breezed right past it pretty much because it was it was a little sad. You know, everybody was having their little interventions and all of that. Um, I'm gonna need the writers to get it together because yeah, there's some things that they're hop skipping and jumping with. I said, what the hell's going on with Damon? I did not like that. So yeah, they need to figure some of this stuff out. But anyway, let's wrap this review up, y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.